All right there, folks. Legendary Highway One, Joan Phillips, here to tell you a little bit about myself and uh, about the good folks in Nottingham. So, uh, me, I actually started off as a simple farmer's girl in uh, Northamptonshire with my dad. And uh, my dad, very wealthy farmer, and I had a ton of suitors coming after me. But you know what? They all boring, aren't they? The old fat old farmers don't want to have anything to do with them. So, what I did is I rejected them. Didn't want nothing to do with them until this lovely gentleman. Let me off my feet. Until it turned out that he was trying to steal me dowry and rob my father blind. But you know what? I was so enamoured with him that I thought, you know what? I'll rob my dad for you. So what I did, my dad was asleep, I stole his clothes, stole all of his money, ran off with Racy. Started a life of crime. You know what crime? Really profitable. Especially highway robbery, high risk, high reward. And we ended up getting up enough money to open up a pub. I started a nice honest life as Mrs. Bracey, not that we were properly married or anything, it's just for keeping appearances, things like that. And so we set up this pub and yeah, we had a couple of shady folks coming in and eventually we'd, uh, well we robbed enough people blind that we needed to be on our way, didn't we? So uh, there we go, back to our way robbing again. And it is a romantic life, I will tell you. Open road, wind streaming through your air. Dressing up as a man, because have you tried riding in a long riding skirt? It's absolutely impossible. Would not recommend it to anybody. Got to ride a side saddle for that. Absolutely impossible. So don't do that. Wear your trousers. And it makes for better maneuverability as well. So when I say our way, Robert, who are you thinking of? You're thinking of that Stand and Deliver song, aren't you? And you're also thinking about Dick Turpin, most famous highway robber. Well, the only reason is that he's famous is because he's nicked all the people's stories. So you know that one about uh, where he ran with Black Bess from London to York for three days, no breaks, to establish an alibi so that he hadn't been at the scene of a crime? That wasn't him. That was one of the members of my gang. That was Swift Nick Nevison, the leader of our little gang of highway robbers. Now it wasn't one of the York, and he didn't run the horse haggard. So in that Dick Turpin story, Black Best dies at the end, doesn't it? Don't want Black Best dying. No, you give you all some freight, you're also your livelihood as an highway robber. But he did do it, he did manage to establish himself an alibi. But you know what, it's the Victorians' fault. Can't blame Dick Turpin for it, but you can blame the Victorians. Because the Victorians, they love to romanticise everything. Everything's got to be nice and airy-fairy and all those highway robbers have got to be dashing and things like that. And they saw Dick Turpin and they thought, he's alright, a little bit vicious, a little bit cruel, murdered a couple of people. You know what, we've got to make him seem nicer. So they picked and chose elements of other highway robbers' stories to try and make this amalgamation of a romantic and dashing figure. Don't believe it, Dick Turpin, he was violent, he was cruel, he deserved to be hanged. Me, never even shot at anybody, never even killed anybody. Doesn't stop you from getting hanged though, does it? It's alright in here, isn't it? Nice and roomy, a bit dark, mind. It would have been darker in my day, man. We don't have all this fancy electricity or nothing, it's all the candles, lanterns, things like that. But you know what, it's alright. Got the place to myself. Nice and quiet, nice place to uh, chill out and reflect, so to speak. Now the reason that I'm in here, not very pleasant, not gonna lie. So uh, I told you, we uh, ran into a bit of trouble when we were in our pub. The trouble was, is that uh, I like to strip men, men down and rob them blind. So uh, that goes into a bit of trouble. So we decided to uh, go back on the highway, go back to what we do best and we had a bit of an issue up on the road here in Nottingham. So we had our eyes on this couch and we were there watching it and we thought, oh, this is the perfect mark. Now what we didn't bear in mind is that uh, coachmen, they can be quite severely armed. This one had a pistol. Shot his pistol into the air, sent me flying off my horse, didn't he? Now Bracey, my lover, my boyfriend, my one and only, he ran off and left me to it, didn't he? Now I tried socking him one, but he socked me out. And he realised that that's maybe not the best thing to be doing to a gentle, delicate young lady. He was a little bit confused, bless him. But he apprehended me. I got drugged to Nottingham County Jail. And I've had my court case now. 
And you see, uh, in my time, there are over 200 crimes which can face public execution. So that includes things such as sheep stealing, poaching, hunting rabbits, being a child inclined to malicious, this is my personal favourite, so if you're a naughty kid you can get arrested and hanged. Technically, you don't tend to do that. But uh, of course, highway robbery, that's up on the list, and so uh, I'm just waiting out for the execution now. They've uh, said that they're going to execute me up on the road for all to see. But you know what, I've still got mates on the outside world, they're not going to let me uh, go in a pauper's grave or anything like that. I'm not a murderer, so they can't be dissecting me or nothing like that. They're just going to build a nice little monument to me. Because they've got money. Well, it's my money I've lent it to, and I've told them to do that for me, so they should follow through, shouldn't they?